How's it going? Happy Friday, or whatever day it happens to be when you see this. May that day have been and be continuing to be good. Uh, just going to play around a little bit tonight with um, a little bit of a continuation of what I did last night, where um, I've got a script that I use to uh, import photos from um, the memory cards from my various cameras. Uh, and I just recently, well, I got it a while ago, and I just really recently started using a uh, GoPro. Um, so last night I went through and updated my test scripts um, to add in a new test to look at the GoPro file. Um, something that I noticed today, um, when I was looking at it yesterday, uh, let's do this. Where is the right place to do this? Um, so in, I guess I can put it where you can see it. So in import photos, this is a, it's a, a Perl script that I wrote years ago. Um, and it basically grab, reads all the photos, moves them into a directory structure I like and makes sure there's not duplicates, um, does renaming to make sure it doesn't overwrite stuff. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, but whenever I add a new camera to the mix, I want to make sure that I test the files that are coming off of that camera. And here you can see the various ones. Here's my 5D2, my S90, my S100, the 10D, the Fuji F31, right? So it's all these cameras that I've had. I want to make sure that their files specifically come in and, and, and work. Um, and I'll show you one of the reasons for that is uh, this directory contains all my sample data input. So uh, the, this T file and this is another thing I talked about a little bit last night, just to re-go re over it. I This is not a setup that I would do for testing now. This is one of the first things that I did with tests. Um, and I'm doing a bunch of stuff that's actually testing on the file system and testing kind of that the file system works. Um, or more to the point that the script does a kind of integration level work of like seeing a file here, renaming it, and moving the file here. If I was going to do this again, I would limit it to unit tests. Um, with maybe one integration test doing that. But like right now, every time for every single one of these, um, it loads data files into, or like images into a specific directory, runs the script over them, and then looks to see if the file showed up in the output. Um, that's a lot of overhead to, to do this. And one of the, and what, one of the tricks is one of the, um, uh, one of the ones, this number 30, which is a large file from an iPhone, like an over five gig one, or over four something gig takes a while to run. <clears throat> so I'm not going to run all the tests this time. Uh, I'm for when we first do it. Um, but let's go. So I've got it not sitting on my directory and I'll show you where we're going to head. So the way that you run these tests is you do prove and then I can do dash V for verbose, which I want to do. And I could just do that right here and it would run that entire test suite. I just ran it last night, so I'm pretty confident everything's passing. Um, and also, I really just want to focus on this one test right now, especially because that other test takes a very long time to run. Um, so I'm just going to go to this specific test that I want, which is T031. I just know this because it was last night, and I just looked at it. So this is my GoPro test. And so um, we're going to run it, loading sample config, do all the mushing around and all test successful. So we're green. Uh, so let's open uh, and sublime text here. Uh, where am I going? Tests. Here it is. So basically, still debating on font sizes here. Um, Basically what this test does is it grabs it grabs that input test file, which is here, this MP4, um, and runs it through the process, the, the general process, that one of the big things that this process does is it's this, it's largely based off this if statement right here. This is kind of the core of it, um, where it looks at EXIF data, the metadata of the file, and it makes decisions on how to grab the, the name and date string because what this what this does is uh, let's do this let's go to movies let's go to my source 2020 September 24th so what it does is it drops oh, why is that one empty that's kind of concerning 
Okay, that's something else to look at. Um, ooh, I really need to look at that. Why is that doing that? Anything in there? Four kilobytes. That's concerning. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but so here's the here's the structure of the rename. It does my initials. It does this year, month, date. Oh, so sorry, it gives you the full directory path, right? So drops it in a year, in a month with this particular format that makes it nice and easy, readable and sortable. Um, day, also with leading zeros, which generally speaking, I'm not a fan of leading zeros, but in this case, I'm, I like them. Um, and then the file names, if they stay in place, have this format. Uh, and the reason I have the, the year, month, day in there again, is sometimes I'm gonna move this file to another place. I'm not gonna see it in the directory structure. So I want, I want this, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna spend time worrying about what to name the files. And I wanna make sure they're unique. So, and this, this is that where you can see this actually worked, where year, month, day, and then I just do hour and minute in this slot because that looks right to me. Um, but, but several files can come in in a minute, right? Multiple. So after it, there's a, there's basically an increment number that says this is the first file at minute, uh, 1990, uh, or 1909, <clears throat> nine, <clears throat> excuse me. Second file, third file. The A just means it's the raw file. Um, B might be a different tone or a different crop. C might be whatever. So that's the, that's the structure of the string. Um, but the thing that I noticed is so I recorded yesterday for I don't know about half an hour and these three files are actually all the same recording in terms of like when I hit start on the camera to when I hit stop on the camera these three files can pose that collectively um, and what's happening is the GoPro is splitting the files at about four gigabytes um, there's some historical reasons for why you do that in terms of the file systems and where you're putting all the stuff on the structure or whatever so Theoretically, this could be one. So there's a four gig and a four gig and a half, you know, half a gig. So it could have been an eight and a half gig file, but that's not how the GoPro works. But the, so the, the thing that I need to make the decision on is, and I'm actually going back and forth on this right now. So it's actually kind of nice that those are all lined up. <clears throat> hmm. When I was coming in here, what I, what I wanted to see, and I'm still going to look at, is, oh, I need to actually look at files again. I've only got one test file on there, so, but I need to look at multiple files um, because the, in the EXIF data, which we'll look at here in just a minute. I think I'm doing this right. Has the tiniest SD card. I mean, that's crazy. That's that's 64 gig, and I know they make bigger ones. All right, let me put this in for a second, and then we're gonna look at it. Also, at some point, I'm gonna be a little disappointed when I have to get a new. It's like my Mac's like a 2015, and it still has the card reader slot on it, and they don't make that in their newer Macs, which is not one of the reasons. That, like, I don't really need to buy a new Mac yet, but um, or a new computer. Um, but I'm going to be really sad when that goes away because it's super nice to just slot it in. Um, all right, so let's come here. Let's do this. So this is, this is the memory card. Uh, and I made some more recordings. Um, and I need to do a little bit more looking at what the structure of this stuff is. I need to do a little bit of research, but I, last night I was just getting the thing going. Um, But so, I think that's today, that's today. There's one, here's one from yesterday. This order is weird because, no. Nope. That's from today, that's from today. I can tell it's today because of the way I'm facing. So this one, 3002. I don't understand the structure yet. I don't have to. Three, four. Hmm. 
maybe that's the part of it. And so they all get a first part, some of them get a second part, some of them get a third part. That's probably right, I'm guessing. Um, so let's see, 102, let's see if we have 202. 202, 302, right? So those are all from the same angle. And I only shot from that angle one time. Okay, so that's that's what that is. That's how that works. Okay, so now we know a little bit more about the directory structure, cool. Um, but so my question is, so when I looked at the EXIF data of, so it's untitled is the name of that card, um, which kind of surprises me. Normally they get a name. Um, I didn't actually format it. It just came. So I don't know if there's a format function in the GoPro. I'm not going to mess with it. Like it's doing okay. So that, Back in the day, that used to be a thing. Like you really wanted to format the card and the camera and like be really specific about it. Um, they've gotten much better since then. Uh, I'm guessing it's the 100, I actually look at the dark. Yeah, 100 GoPro. All right, so here's our files again. And what was the one, was it? So there's one, which is the first one I did where I was just testing to see if the thing turned on. Two is, is where it, really where it started. Three, okay, that makes sense. Three was one I did back here. So this was the file that I actually made in this room just to provide a test file. Um, so it didn't have uh, any extra, like there's no follow on for it. This is before I understood the format of the thing. Um, so now that I've run the, the program once and I see that stack coming here, which now that I think about it, I really I think I really like this actually. This is working really nice because this these are all the same shot it just split the file because it needed to split the file I, I'm gonna leave it like this I'm gonna show you what I would what I was thinking I was gonna do and then but now that I've looked at it I'm not um, but I do also want to just kind of investigate a little bit um, to see where uh, to see if I could split it so oops so shot so GHO, whichever por portion with two at the end of it is our is our track. So here's two, here's two. Okay, right, good. So what I want to do right now is just look at EXIF tool, which you can install from EXIF tool something something something, and I just want to send it this, right? Actually, I could do this. Paste. So this is what I, I looked at last night to try and, and figure out exactly what, how I wanted to do this. And so the trick is, so there's some file modified time. So I'm, I'm going after a date time. Um, and you can actually see that the access time has changed now. Definitely don't want to do that because I, I want it when the thing was shot. So here's the file times. It also has this create and modify. This create date is actually what's being pulled. So in the, in this, loop or in this yeah in the loop or whatever but in this in this conditional this is the first thing that gets called so if create date exists oh sorry aha so create date gets called date time original gets called neither one of those fields exists in the exif data exif data exif um in the gopro thing they exist in other ones that's one of the other camera uh image files and that's one of the craziest things about this is like there's no consistency in it um which is the reason I have all these tests and it's the reason we have all these loops. Um, so I've, in all those files, there's one, two, three, four, five different ways of looking for metadata that I found that I wanted to, to explicitly use that I trusted. Um, so that's that. Uh, the create date is what this ended up using. So. Create date with all mushed together, it doesn't find, date time original doesn't find, but create date with a space in it is here. So this is what the script is currently using. Um, when I was looking through it yesterday, there are other times down here, this track create date and this track modify date. And so I wasn't sure if I wanted to try and use that. And I, I kind of waffled back and forth trying to figure out, cause like, ah, oh, this is interesting and whatever. And there's also this media create date and create time, but you'll notice, so let's see. 1909-21, 1909-21, 1909-21, ooh, that's weird. 
This is why I don't use the file mod, because I think this is actually coming off the system. Yeah, because this was a couple minutes later. See, I don't use this, because this is actually like the file info. Like if you do... See, that file was changed on the file system at, at 1929, or at 1921. So... Oh, that's weird. Well, I guess it took a couple minutes to get there. Whatever, like I don't trust the file system stuff. Like that can change, that's fungible. Um, so my question last night was if I wanted to try and switch to this track data, I didn't know what the difference is, but now I'm wondering if, and so I just, and, but then I ran the test and it worked out of the box. And that's because it was finding this create date where we found it, right? It was hitting this create date. And I don't think that's the file system one. I think that's baked into like the access data. Um, and what I mean by that is, I think Access Tool looks at some file system data and it looks in the image data, metadata as well, and it gives you a report of both of those things. And I think create date is one that's baked into the image metadata and is not the file system data which could change underneath it. So that's where I was, but the, the thing that I'm wondering about now, because I just did that as a, as a one-off with that short one, what I want to know now is if, so track date change for the for, for our first thing. Bye-bye. I'm gonna make a couple notes here. Just so I don't actually have to remember it, remember it. So this is for this file. And we have create date and track create track date match. Now I want to come back over here and it should be two zero 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 two, right? Yep. All right. Um, so let's go back here. Exif tool. Hit that one. All right. So we should see. I'm sure we're going to see the same create date because that's what it was doing, right? So here's the create date. cheat. We know this is this. Now the question is, what's the track one? Oh, so it didn't change. Now, oh, wait a minute. There's a media one too, right? Also didn't change. Okay. So I, I couldn't have done anything with it regardless. So the, the, the question that I had was if one of those other dates changed for the, for the subsequent files, and if so, I was thinking I might actually want to use those just to just to kind of keep them in order. Oh, but it's interesting. Yeah, so wait, I still... Because there's no guarantee unless... Do I sort these before I pull them in? How do I get... List of photos to move. This is old object-oriented Perl, so be careful. This is not how I do stuff anymore. I'm, it, it, it's fine, it works great or whatever, but it's just not, uh, it's not how I would do stuff these days. Here we go. So if it has, okay. Where is it? Sort self. Oh, here we go. Sort. Loop through the photos. So I am sorting it going in. Okay. Um, and see, I don't know a good way to test that. Uh, I mean, I guess you could set up an array of file handles you pass and just sort it. But again, you're kind of you're kind of testing a thing that, like, you don't want to test the sort function, but you do all want to test that you are sorting. So, um, but right now I'm just looking at this, so I'm, I'm trusting this because basically where I'm headed with this is. What I want to make sure happens is in my output, I want to make sure that the first, that, that you know, date string zero one is the, is corresponds to uh, GH01, or is that a zero one? GH01. 
ID number or whatever. Um, and then two here equals two, but I don't, I, yeah, so I, I just wanna make sure they're straight. I think they're gonna be fine. And by the way, it's not critical that I do that. Cause like if I'm, I'm gonna have to reassemble these, mm, but I might be able to do that automatically. I could probably do that automatically. Yeah, but I could do that automatically. So, so it is important that they that they stay in in order. I want them to be in that order. Yeah, because I'm going to work on getting that automatic. Um, I'm trying to make this my process as automated as possible. Uh, there's going to be some stuff that I've got to do, uh, but that's fine. So what I really need to do is figure out what happened with this one. Um, okay. So, but anyways, yeah. So I'm not actually going to mess with that script. Um, cool. It's doing what I want it to do. Uh, I thought I was, uh, so I couldn't have actually changed it anyways. What I was hoping, what I was thinking I was going to change the date time, but that only would have been possible if one of, if there was another date time to use, but they're all the same. So couldn't have changed it anyways. Even before that on examination, I don't want to change it. Like I'm thinking through the, the mechanics of it. I like it better the way it is. So cool. Um, I spent like an hour last night, uh, doing, uh, getting all the stuff to work. Cause like Git was freaking out and, um, there's a giant, cause there's a giant file in there. And like, I had to go edit my ZSH profile and like all this other junk. I really only ended up copying the file and I think changing three lines of code. Um, that was just changing the date and changing the test ID. So it was, that was a, sometimes that happens. Uh, that was not my favorite. Uh, but you know, whatever, sometimes it happens. Um, so the other thing I'm doing is I'm making I'm making notes now. So turns out didn't need to update like the structure. As is. So um and so also the other thing I'm gonna do is Check on timestamp of videos to pull down. See if you can do a different thing. This is my to-do list. Uh, not my to-do list, my ideas list. It's just, it's ideas. Uh, but so we did this one, kind of. Just kind of like keeping the, uh, don't need to do this. Actually, let's do skipped. Whatever. I, like this is just. I'm kind of playing around with this. Um, but I just. I think it'll be neat to. Oops. Got double lines in there. I need that. I'll do it there. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, so in my here's my ideas. Um, so this is just stuff and like I figured it'd be fun to just kind of keep track of what gets knocked off. Um, cool. So that's good. I am excited about that. Uh, now I'm just figuring out. Now I don't want to mess with the automation of the of assembling the MB4 files because that may take like they're four gigs a piece, so that may mush them for a little while. Plus, uh, right now I'm running low on space on the machine. Uh, I've got to start moving some stuff. I already moved some stuff off, but I'm grabbing all these streams that I'm doing, pulling them down from Twitch because they don't last there forever, and then putting them up on YouTube and like that's like, eating up a lot of space. Uh, so, anyways, whatever. Uh, point GIF viewer to new file. So I have a GIF viewer that I built. I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, yeah, add a form here. We'll just do this real quick. Um, so the other one that I've got is uh, I've got these forms that I'm starting to add back in uh, to a mix of just having like quick things to go hit specific sites on. Like you can always Google anything and get to wherever. But sometimes I want to go specifically to Stack Overflow or specifically to Wikiquote. Uh, and another one that I saw today is this Etymology Online Dictionary, um, which I've, I've, I've run into a couple times before, but uh, I really want to get to and hit and make sure I've got the, the way to kind of just get to it in general. So um, what I've got is, and so let me, oh, actually, I'm going to start a practice here. So let me get back to notes. And what time are we at? We are at... 25 men, etymology form. So I'm just 
these won't be the actual notes. These are some markers for me. Um, the here, that's the wrong one. So here is my tools page. Nope, alphabetized. Where are my forms? Oh, it's just sitting on the index page. Uh, and again, this is a this is just a little uh, local web server that's running off of MAMP um, that just gives you Apache and a whole bunch of other stuff uh, out of the box. So it's a PHP server um, that I'm using. This is it, right? Searches? Yeah. So all we're going to do, I should format this better at some point, but I'm not there yet. Um, I use old ways of doing things. Uh, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this form. Inspect the element. So that's the input. Show me the form. There we go. So I'm going to copy the form. We're going to drop the form right here. Is that playing? I don't hear anything. So, ugh, I don't need that div. Text value, autocomplete off. I'm going to get rid of that. Area autocomplete list. I don't, I'm going to take off the area stuff right now. I don't really understand what it does. So kill it. Now, um, Autofocus off, placeholder search. Oh, yeah, I'm going to leave placeholder. I, I just discovered placeholder the other day. Name Q, we need the name. Required, we can get rid of auto capitalize off. I didn't know any of these things were. Um, it's got a title. Where does a title do? List box. Uh, there's our div. I don't think we're going to need the specific search bar, but we'll just, uh, he's got I instead of M. It's kind of funny. I don't need that div. We don't need new divs. So there's our two end boxes. There's the end of our form. Okay. So, oh, search bar. Interesting. Oh, that's a class. Okay. So I don't, I don't need to give it style. So the action, all we're going to do here. So it action by default is a get call. Um, so all I really need to do is grab, so like if we do um, test, unless it bounces, yeah, you see slash search is what we see right here. And then it puts question mark Q because this this text area or this text box has a value of two or name of two and then equals test. So that's how we do it. Uh, so all we need to do to make this work is I need to send it Right now, this is going to the root of my website or the root of whatever website the form page is on, which is my local host or my local tools page. It's not actually on local host. Um, it's on local host, but not at local host, whatever. Um, but so if I do this and actually send it specifically to that, I'm still not hearing music. A little something going. Um, and I've already gotten two copyright things, even on music that I licensed, which is super frustrating. I guess I just need to sit down with this music at some point and just go through it and do it. And then I'll make a stream for other people to use. This is all uh, YouTube's free music. Um, that's the wiki quote one. Here, hang on, let me tap this back over, get over here for a second. Um, search, title search, whatever. But now if we go here, we should see this new page. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's a search button. We don't actually need that. The only thing we would need is if there was a, I just wanted to see if title shows up, but it doesn't, I don't think it would. That's, I don't know, I need to go, like this is only for me. So like the fact that I'm ripping out any and all, um, accessibility things. I'm not doing best practices for the web in general, but like this is a tool for me specifically. So I'm, I'm willing to sack that, like just cut that stuff off. Um, yeah, so search, which we want to change to this place. Is 
that. So we should see that. And then um, placeholder. There you go. So just fire straight over to that. Um, one who acts as a deputy for another from place plus holder. That's cool. Uh, this is a really neat site. Uh, I, I ran into it before, and then somebody I was watching on a stream today uh, went to it and was talking about how like basically it sounds like one person built this, um, and but it's just it's pretty phenomenal. It's really fun, uh, especially if you're into, well, especially if you're, if you're into etym etymology, it's really fun. If you're not, you should be. It's kind of fun. Um, so that's got that. Uh, why is ID no, search? Why it's um yeah. The only thing I would have kept in here is this, if there's an, a hidden input because I don't know if the, the server needs to see that on the back end. But um, there wasn't any hidden for this one, so it's fine. I just leave the wiki quote in there. But what I don't know is why is wiki quote a different height. Form action. I don't see. There's not classes on it. It's got an ID on it. Oh, ID of search form. Did I get? Surely I didn't just put in like a search form ID. Yeah. No. Uh, name search title search. I don't know. Somewhere in there, something's calling it. Type search. Oh, I bet that's what it is. This is a search type, and the other ones are text types. Let's see if this doesn't get bigger now. Yep, okay. That's what it is. There we go. Consistent. I like it. Uh, and then just for fun, I'm actually going to get them a little closer together with my non CSS approach. Uh, cool. All right, that's cool. That's that. Um, see, I should make a web form for doing this. Uh, add a form for that. Cool. So we got this. Is it smart enough to catch this if I do that? Yes, it is. Uh, sweet. Let's see. What else are we going to do? Um, Oh, point the GIF viewer at new storage location so it's easier to deal with the git ignore. Um, so I've got a, a GIF viewer page that, um, well, so this local Launchpad site that I've got, I, I've never really had in version control because for the longest time there was, like for years I didn't do anything with it. It was just a couple links. Um, so I just didn't worry about it. Uh, as I started doing all this other stuff, I finally set up and put a git repository on it. Um, inject that one here um, that's the wrong thing actually I can just click on it can I eject what's there's Firefox uh, is that gonna go or is it oh no it's not because I'm in it there you go it was ejected all right that out there I'll run that later once I get some space um, with Firefox. That's weird. No, it's too loud for me. I don't think I turned it up for you. And a little bit. I gotta figure out this music stuff. Like, I wanna have something back there, but. Not that one. Uh, boom, boom, boom. So, I'm not gonna click on it right now, because, well, actually, I don't know what's gonna happen. So, let's see. It's probably gonna break. Yep. Okay, nothing's there. Uh, So, finder. And where's my finder? Oh, just needs a window. So, in my launch pad, well, actually, I guess the other thing I should do is. I haven't actually committed anything to get yet. Um, I have to do that. Or I was going to do that before I started, but then I figured, why not just do it on stream? Even though it's kind of boring and tedious. Um, yeah, so I made a repository. So it it used to be, I just have this is going to be the first commit. Um, I had so the code to do my little Git thing, which you'll see in a second, 
is all right here. And I used to have the GIF, sorry, GIF, not Git, the GIF files themselves. Um, here's all the original ones. Uh, here's some, a bunch of them I'm making. And here's the cat. Whoop. Uh, it's going to have to make the cache ones. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, because I resized it. This will make sense in a second. Um, but I had them all here. But then I was going to, when I started to make a Git repo, at first I just did add everything. But then I realized, like, all those GIFs were in there. And there's also, like, in the factory, there's actually videos because that's what I make the GIFs from. So, like... There's 10 gigs of videos in here. I don't want to put that in Git. Um, so I could have e you know, relatively easily just added Git ignores to the directories, but like I like the idea of like this is the tool and then this is the content and, and getting a, a, a sibling relationship up there. Um, so I just moved them up, but when I moved them up, I haven't changed the code yet to get to them. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in Git repo first. Um, uh, what's the one? Git files. We're going to get rid of this. Uh, and I guess, well, whatever. I could probably do my, uh, where's my basic, I've got a git ignore. That I usually use that just gets rid of a whole bunch of crap if I hit it. Uh, get ignore. Just paste all that crap in there. It status. So now we shouldn't see the gifts. Yeah. So up here we had the oh, somewhere, whatever. The the gif files directory or gif files directory isn't there anymore. So we won't commit that. Um, I think all the rest of this stuff is fine. I don't think there's any uh, any stuff in there. Uh, git status, right? Git add, just shoot it all. Git commit message. Cool. Uh, I used to have, do I want to put that back in? Oh, actually I should do this. Uh, where is our, so we're at basically, I'm gonna call it 35 min. Ooh, must be a markdown thing. Uh, working on moving gifters and putting back in VSH uh, git. status prompt. Okay, we're going to do that first. Um, the thing that was causing me issue last night was when I downloaded the, or when I cloned the Git repo for my import photos script, it has that like five gig file in there and then a bunch of other little files and all this other stuff. If you run git status on it, it takes git status a long time to process that. Not 100% sure why, but it did. Um, the trick was I had in this prompt, I had a call out to get status here. So when I tried to go into the directory, get status fired and it locked up the terminal, um, couldn't do anything. So it took me a little while to figure that out. The, the things that I did to kind of solve that were, um, well, the, the main thing I ended up doing to solve that was I took that get status message out of the prompt so that it doesn't fire every time it, it goes in there. Um, it's kind of messing with me to not see it right now. I'm really used to seeing it in directories. So another one of the things that I had on the list is to set a switch to turn that on and off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on or put it back in place uh, and then maybe make a switch for it. I don't know if it's worth it or if it's just like, is this just one of those things where I just kind of copy paste? Um, so that's in, if we're going to this themes, 
Uh, yeah, it's funny. I didn't actually commit it. Um, customize get prompt. So this this was the note I made. So I made this yesterday. Um, date added. Oh, I originally did this in 2018. My first that's probably when I first got DSH, maybe? No, because I had it in 2013. Um, I just I've been finding it amusing to see how far back some of this stuff goes. Um, to add the get status line, change that to that. Okay, there we go. So I tried to comment this out in um, in it, but it didn't work. And I don't know why, and I just bailed. So this is our code. And it's this line right here, I believe, at 135. If we copy that and we paste it here, is it identical? It is, okay. Yeah, so we're just gonna replace that with this. Go to that, right? Save that, close that. Uh, how do you, uh, I can't remember. It's like, you just export it again? There's a way to do that, to reopen everything without uh, without exiting the terminal, but I just exit the terminal. It's easier for me to deal, deal with. Uh, so now if we go into Woodshed Launchpad, HTML Prod, we should see uh, status message, get status message show up. There we go. So we're on master. Um, cool. And there's no other like symbols beside it. So we're, we're up to date. So we do get status. It'll show, uh, no changes. Um, here's the thing with this one. Ah, whatever. I might as well get check out branch dev. I, I'm still as a solo developer. I still go back and forth on this, on the all this stuff, um, the get stuff. Uh, sometimes I might have just put that straight in master, but and then because I could just fall back to it, it's okay to do it in dev. I don't know. But there's all the like the, all the overhead of going into get and doing like the brand like so going into get cool. Got no problem with that. Just straight version control, fine. Like as a single line, doing all the branching stuff gets a little bit like for this. I don't know. Like as long as it, as long as I got it, I can go back and find it. I can go back and find it. Um, yeah, I'm not doing anything big. Um, is that how you do it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so I think I've already got it open here. Uh, that's the left coding thing. Yeah, okay, so that's cool. So we're good. I'm just, uh, make sure the notes, this is this. So here is my GIF. I've been saying GIS, get whatever. Here's my tool for the images that animate. Um, and it's, I can actually put some of the stuff in variables, uh, to make it a little nicer. Get source. Yeah, so here's where so they used to be here under get source. So I need to go up a directory and go into get files and then into source. And then okay, um Oh, this is gonna be interesting. Cause that's actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna do a couple things. One, this is I'm kind of gonna go back to um, the thing I keep referring to, which is the Sandy Met style of don't get more than one step away from green. Um, And in this case, since I'm doing manual testing, uh, all I'm going to do, I want to make sure that the thing that I'm doing works. Or I want to make sure, um, here, who are we going to use for our thing? 
happy two. On. Uh, what's a good? That's ah, two. Happy two. I like happy two. So we're gonna copy this. We're gonna put this back, and then there's a couple other things that I took out, and it's probably gonna break, and maybe it'll tell us, maybe it won't. Gift source a resize cache as a directory. Let me just see what happens if we show this page now. There we go. Okay. So what this what this script does, or what this file script, whatever it does, is it looks in the source directory, grabs all the GIFs, and then makes smaller versions of them uh, that then get this called for the display. Because um, I don't, like, some of these GIFs get, like, 11 meg or something. Um, and so I just want to have them, like, resize properly, basically. So that's working. And then the other thing that's not going to work right now, I think it's going to bust... Yeah, even though it didn't show me an error. Uh, at some point, I'll figure out where the errors go. Um, but is, I think it should be current gif. Let's try this again. There it is. Send it. Um, why didn't that open? Oh, interesting. Hang on. Close that. Close that. Close that. We don't need those. Ooh. There's a launch D script that points to that directory that should have fired. There it goes. Oh, it just took a while. That took a long time. The whole purpose of this is to is to open that, is to let me look at all my GIFs, click one, and have it open this window for me so that I can click and drag it and throw it to Discord or whatever. Um, that just took a long time. Uh, okay, so that's working. This is how the tool works. So now I can go through and slowly but surely uh, make updates to it and, and stay green, keep the thing working in, in progress. Um, and so I'm gonna do this. Uh, figure out the right way to do this, or the best way to do this. Because not all this stuff I gotta, I gotta do something about this music at some point. Um, cause not all of this stuff, like it's definitely not in variables. It's kinda loud, isn't it? It got way louder than headphones. See, I need to normalize all this stuff. I'm not angry at it. That, that was probably a little much. Ah, whatever, let's give it for now. It's in my head. Um. So all I'm doing, I'm just trying to look, I'm looking for all the places where the path exists. So let me let me pull this out to a variable to start with. Um. Again, I'm. I'm just trying to not, I'm trying to keep things working the entire time instead of, and, and only making one, and only making one change at a time. So like I, I could, I could do that move that I did where I just copied all the directories and stuff and I could go through and start poking at all these until I kind of got it to work again. But I want to be more methodical about it and, and just keep making changes, but keep the thing working the entire time. Um, and that's uh, what Sandy Metz calls saying one step away from green. So it's, it's okay if I, if I make one change and it breaks, but I should immediately, and, and for her, it's the test. Like you would make a breaking test and then you would fix it. And then another breaking test, another fix, right? Um, sometimes we jump around a lot. And so you make a far off test that requires lots of changes before it works. Uh, she's taught me to be very methodical about the stuff. And I, it took me a while to get there, but I love it. Um, it really, and, I, and it still takes me practice to do it. Um, it's not my, like I, have to read Jira sometimes to get it, um, but I'm, I dig it. So that still works. This should still work. Uh, get source dir right? Because that's really what it is. So it works. Um, and then so source dir here, which isn't gonna work. 
Wait. What just happened? Oh, I see what happened. So this needs to be in double quotes. Like that. And hopefully we still work. We still work. So look at the file, it's fine. And so again, we're gonna come set the path where point. Okay, so replace get source. Is this gonna be the full yeah, okay. So I think this is gonna work. I guess we can just do this, we don't need the quotes. Oh, uh, is that gonna bust? No, because oh yeah, so all I'm doing is I'm putting in the variable now. It, like I've everything's pointing to the same place. So all I'm doing is replace is this is removing duplication, right? Um, because I've I had the the explicit output of the text string in multiple places. Where really what I want is a variable with the text string defined once and that variable in all the places. So if I change the text string, everything changes. So this is just moving removing du duplication. Um Cool, so that worked. Uh, resized cache, resized file path, it comes there, okay. Uh, okay, so that's, that's that was that one. So that's cool. Uh, GIF files goes in there, GIF file. Resized cache. Really what we want is, I call this GIF resized. Stir. Right, so again, I'm just pulling out the strings and putting them in vars. Even though I, even though I only see that the one time, I still want it controllable outside, right? Because I'm going through this effort. Um, so I think everything else in here is... thing so this shouldn't blow up that works cool so now I'm just gonna see so like everything's everything's in variables and in um, variables so what I'm gonna do is I want to change them and point to this other directory now it's gonna be interesting because I've got to add the dot dot slash to get up um, the other thing I'm gonna do real quick though is uh, I'm going to make this and only put one file in there because if I do, and we're going to do, we'll see if Luke shows up here. Um, this process builds all of the files. So if I point it to that big source directory, it's going to take it several minutes to get through and build it, building all the files. Um, so I just want to test with a single file. So. If I was, or if I'm at GIF source here, I want to go up a directory and to GIF files. The other thing I'm going to do is do this. So this is another, like, stay in one step from green. I'm not actually going to change that one. I'm going to overwrite the variable. GIF source dir equals dot dot slash that slash source test. Source test. See what happens. There's loot. That worked. Perfect. Okay. Um, now the other the thing that it's not yet doing is it's still putting like we'll see Luke in this resize cache. Yep. So the cache is still pointing to the is pointing to the wrong place. But hopefully we can fix that too. Uh, so it's GIF files again. So, oh, so but now that I know that that works, I'm going to delete this one. And then, again, I'm just going to overwrite the variable to start with. And the reason I do that is because then I can comment it out and get back to green. So that's the one step away from green um, if things blow up. Um, maybe I just shouldn't have music, but it feels like there needs to be something back there. Um, so we're going to go here. Why does that look different? Oh, it's, the, it's in a different place. 
And then what do we call, what's the name of the directory now? Cached. So now, and so what'll happen with this is this process looks in that cache directory to see if the file exists. And if it doesn't, it grabs it from the source and creates it. Um, so this should now show us Luke again. And then we should see a file now in that cache directory. There we go. Uh, so that changed it. Good. Perfect. Uh, now the last thing that we need to do, so I'm going to get rid of this source test here and just go to source. So we're going to be in prod. I'm going to get rid of this. Oops. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start that page because it's going to take a little while. Uh, and you'll see what it'll do is PHP apparently buffers its output after a certain amount of time uh, or unbuffers it. So, and this, this threw me the first time it did this because it's like, it only, it looks like it only produced that many GIFs. And I was like, what the hell happened? I'm looking at my code all over the place. But then what will happen here in a minute or in some number of seconds, maybe 30, is... Uh, and, a lot, and when I stopped it and I looked at the HTML, the HTML stopped too. And that's what I really couldn't figure out is like how the loop ended. Well, the trick was the loop wasn't ending. It was just paused. So it like PHP buffered some amount, sent the buffer, buffered another amount, and then sent that buffer. So like, but in between those times, you're sitting there with an incomplete HTML page. So let's see. Yeah. So now there's more. Um, and so that'll, and you can also, you can also watch it in this cache directory. So there's 53 items, there's 54 items, 55 items, right? It's just continuing to build on the backside. Um, in my factory, yeah, so all this stuff is not in version, uh, version control. I'm fine with that. It's backed up, like it's it's backed up to my backup thing. Um, so I'm not worried about the version, that aspect of it. The, it's the code that I want version controlled. Um, but we're good. Uh, so the, the last thing that we need to do is uh, define where we want to push the um, I'm gonna put this up here. So we saw a minute ago this current GIF with send it. This is where the so when I click on when I click on a GIF, I'm not gonna do it right now because it's in the process of running. It goes to a lot to a to another page. That other page looks at the sort at the file path that it has. We can actually look at this. Uh, launch GIF. So all it does is it looks at the name of the file that we're sending it, which is what gets sent when you click on it, and then it makes a copy of that file. Oh, yeah, it's from the full path. Yeah, so it, it gives it the full path. So this should still work. Um, it gives it its full path, and then it moves it into this directory. And then I was originally trying to have PHP launch the finder and open it for me. And I fought with it for a while and just wasn't getting it to go. Um, so what I ended up doing was creating a launch D script that we'll go look at in a second that will, that watches the folder and, and fires it up. But so what I'm going to do right now is we're going to change this to this, uh, the, oh, I wonder if we can write outside. I wonder if it can write outside the, um, the directory tree. I'll bet it can't. Well, can it? I don't know. We'll find out. So this this directory and these files are the root of the of the web folder. The thing that I don't know is if the command that we have. I don't know if PHP is locked down to only be able to write into the web folder, or if it can actually write to anywhere on the file system. Um, so we're about to find out. Uh, So where is this file? This file's here. So we need to go up one directory, up two directories, and then into that directory. So we're gonna go up one, up two, into there. If I did that right, ah, uh, crap. They don't want to do this because as soon as I hit it, oh, so what I can do, so this, this page redirects. The, the reason I didn't want to hit it was if I click on here, it's going to jump to the launch page and then it immediately re, re, uh, re comes back to here, um, which would have fired the process again and then have two of them running. Um, I guess this one might have stopped. I'm not 100% sure. But now I should be safe. Uh, so we're going to do this. Yeah, see, so it launched a new window and it didn't 
redirect because I took out the redirect. That's the word. I didn't take out. I took out the redirect. Um, yeah, this file doesn't show anything or do anything because if you put code on here, then it wouldn't be able to do the redirect because the redirect comes on the header. So close that, and then let's see if there it is. So it worked. Okay, so it can write outside the, the, the directory root. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, it moves the source file too, so it moves the bigger file. So you, you got the little thumbnails that you have, and then uh, you move from there. So that's slick. Um, that was what I wanted to do there. That's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in before I forget about it. You gotta remember not to refresh that page. Whoops. So close that. Those are all good. Set time limit. Uh, I don't think I actually need that. That was where I was, I'm not gonna take it out right now because I don't think it's hurting anything, but I think that was where I was trying to figure out the buffer stuff. I'm gonna leave that. Uh, cool, point get figure new locations and deal with get ignore. Done. Uh, cool, uh, what else we got? Let's see what else we got. Um, bot that retweets, that's for review. So yeah, so I've got other stuff down here. Um, Don't refresh. Uh, let's see where it is. See, it's still building. It's down to Mr. Robot. Um, what am I going to do? Uh, Twitch ideas. Twitch ideas. Which is eventually is not going to be Twitch ideas. It's just going to be stream ideas. Ooh. Um, yes, here's the stuff that's kind of like on deck or whatever. And then here's some longer term stuff that I'll look at at some point. So that's. That's the journal list. Um, I should make this bigger. Something like that. Uh, ooh, make a tool that launches new Hugo files and launches them. Um, could set the file name and type. Could set, so walk you through this. Um, got my search box so we can close that. Twitch ideas I'm gonna leave up. I need to have different browser things going on here. Browser uh, editor. It is one hour and three minutes. Hugo file maker command. Zuh. Um, I guess I can just put this in here. So here's what I'm working on. Um, so I use Hugo for my website. Uh, ooh, that's nuts. I don't like that. There we go. Uh, which I love. It's a, a, stat, it's a static site generator. Um, so it builds files that you can basically put anywhere. Um, and oh, digital.gov. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, but one of the things like like it's super fast. Um, the uh, losing confidence by saying right. Um, so you can see like it just these are nothing but static files sitting out there, and uh, it's also incredibly fast to build. So just to walk you through Hugo for a minute. Oh, actually, get status. Hmm. I want to delete those. All right, we don't need this, this, or this. Oops. Twitch ideas. Let's cool. I'm just gonna. Uh, Yeah, whatever, I updated Twitch ideas too. Like, again, this is one of those, the overhead for me to like really like get all really in this is not worth it for doing the thing. Um, uh, that's the one that needs to go down, whatever. So, oh, let's see what's done. Yep, nope. Oh, we're in W's, we'll be there soon. Um, 
So Hugo is sitting in this directory, which at alanwsmith.com prod. This is my Hugo directory. And you can do a local version, like a local Hugo server, C-R-V-E-D, uh, which is cool. And you, it'll give you an idea of how quickly it builds the entire site, which that was really slow. Um, and it runs on localhost, so we're cool. So here's like, yeah, so here's the one that I'm working on right now. This is the this is the file that we're, we're in progress on. That's this. Um, another cool thing about Hugo is it does this. Uh, it's got one of the things built in so that if I make changes and save it, it will, oh, you can't see it because that's not part of there. Let's put it here. I don't know if the semicolon works, but like, boof, there it is. So like, it's really fast to edit and to still preview and to get to see your stuff. Um, the thing that's, and also I need to commit a bunch of stuff. Um, the thing that's a little bit of a pain about it is making a new file. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is the directory structure that I've got set up for it uh, is uh, just, whoops. I don't know where that went. Is this content directory. And it's just all these folders, of which there are now 899. Um, eventually, one of the things I got on my list is to try and figure out how to sort this stuff out. But the reason they're like that is because I like this. I like this structure where you just get to. Why is that? Oh, because I turned off the server. Um, oh, I've also got a little command uh, HS, which is for Hugo serve, um, which we'll probably see in a second because I'm going to build this in the same place. Uh, try that again. Um, I like this directory structure where it's just domain name, and you can see it a little better on the actual thing, right? Um, domain name and then name of thing. So, but in order to do that out of the box, you have to build, you just build the directories like this because that's, Hugo just maps that tree over basically. Um, there are ways to do aliases and some other stuff that I'll end up doing. I did it, I kind of messed with that the first time I moved into Hugo, um, but it was a little fragile um, for the way that I had done it. Uh, and it was working, it was fine, but it was like, it still didn't, just didn't jive right. And I really just wanted to use the defaults out of the box. So as long as I got to this, I was cool with it. Um, so I still, and it's fine, but it's a, it's kind of a pain to, like if I make an, and so the way that you make a new post, or one of the ways you make a new post, the easy way, is, um, I'll leave that running for now. Um, so we're gonna go into woodshed, alanwsmith.com, prod. I'm gonna go Hugo new, um, live coding date test, for example, slash index dot md. And so now I've created that file, but if I want to edit in sublime text, I've then got to go to sublime text and then I've got to find it in sublime text, which I happen to be sitting right on top of it. But when you come at it like this, um, so I can launch Sublime Text in my Hugo directory at least with STH. So then you go into content and then you gotta find it. Which uh, sometimes I have problems with the alphabet. Uh, H I, what am I doing? Live? J A K L? Live coding. So here's the file. That takes too long. Or that could be faster. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make a script that, or a function, I think I'm going to do this as a, as a um, bash or ZSH, ZSH, ZSH function. Um, I want to make a, I want to make a something that does that automatically for me. And my goal is to be able to do like, is HN a thing? No. Okay, good. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so I want to make a function that I think I'm going to call hn, and I want to then be able to pass it a, a file name. Um, uh, 
you know, day, there we go, and then example. And I want to hit enter, and I want it to do a, a few things. I want it to make that file, but again, so I didn't have to add, and I don't have that index.md. I just want to basically give it this directory, um, uh, or this, this name. So I wanted to make that. I wanted to open Sublime Text to this directory tree, and then I wanted to open that file in there because I can because you can open in Sublime Text. Um, st is, is my shortcut to Sublime Text. Um, it's S U B T or something out of the box, but I, I've aliased it. Um, but so I can go into Content. See what's in A's. Um, audio, e, A D, uh, oh, audio licenses, index. So I can do this, and it'll fire up in whatever window is open. Um, and the the problem with that is if I'm in this and my other localhost one, I think I went wrong. Yeah, see, it opens. I wish I, I, I wish Sublime Text had a little bit, and maybe it does. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it does somewhere. But like, I'd like for it to be able to know that if I open this window that's in this directory tree, don't, and that, and I've got a window open with that directory tree, open it correspondingly. Don't don't make a new window, um, or and even worse, don't open it in a in a window that has another directory tree that's unassociated with it. Um, so that's that's kind of what I want to do is. Is to get that. So I think, and I think I can do this. Um, whatever. It's all computer stuff. So of course we can do this. Um, I think I have an idea about how to approach it. I guess is a better way to say that. So we're gonna take a look at this. Also, I may have to sit down in a little bit because I've been standing for a little while now. Um, I've mean, been standing for all of this, but then also prior. Um, so here, here's what we're gonna do. First thing we're gonna do. I want to clear a bunch of this stuff out because I want to have a decent thing. And also, I'm going to get rid of this. Delete folder. Yeah. Delete. Close that. I'm gonna. I'm just going to get all the way out of Sublime Text windows now. Um, which I think I am. Is it alive? Yes. Okay. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do. Here's all the crap that I haven't done yet. Um, yeah, I just, I, so I, I added a whole bunch of new, um, videos today, uh, over the past couple days, whatever. Um, so we're just, again, so yeah, so I, I originally checked out this branch, uh, November 12th, 2019. Again, I don't worry, like, as long as I just got the stuff stamped in there, it's, I don't care. Um. Uh, get add dot. Also, I don't care that I'm adding a bunch of them. Uh, added YouTube live coding and journal videos. Sometimes I do okay with the messages. Sometimes I don't. Um, but yeah, you can see this. I forget what all these symbols mean, but that one and that one. And when I, whenever you don't see a symbol, it means you're you're on a, a you know a, a clean branch, uh, not clean. Get status. I think I've got GS. Kind of, yeah, get status. Um, all right. And so let me back out here too. Let me get Hugo stopped. Let me close this. So what we're gonna try is. Oh, I need to do that launch Descript. I'll maybe do that later. Um, hang on. I just opened another app, but it's not opening yet. There we go. Come on. Come on, baby edit. There we go. Um, oh, we'll get back in this at some point, which is uh, building Redshift stuff. Um, let's do this. Uh, I don't want to say to do, like that's all I get. Uh, to do. Um, stuff. Edit. Launch D for GIF send. It. Just a reminder. Uh, okay, cool. So. Hmm. 
what I've got is in this, nope, um, this AWS functions. Uh, so this is where I, I used to make aliases a little bit, but now I'm starting to make functions because I like the idea of just kind of always having a function in case you want to expand it. Cause sometimes with an alias, you end up wanting to do another thing or whatever, but like I just, and also I want the practice of functions. So this is going to be a little bit of a new one for me because like I know, so when I call Hugh God, um, Hugo D, um, or I'm not going to deploy right now. Um, just cause I don't, uh, some of that stuff still needs to be edited. Um, but HS is the function. And so by the way, which HS, it's funny for me because it doesn't actually show you where it, just, where it is. Nope. Um, I still don't know, I'm not gonna look it up right now, um, how to find where this function is. Like I, I know where this is because I'm looking at it, but I've had in the past a couple times where I've lost functions and just had to kind of like dink around to find them. Um, but I'm sure there's a way to do that. Uh, but so, yeah, so HS, so when I run HS, this is what it does. It's gonna CD into my um, Hugo website directory. And then it's gonna run Hugo serve D for me. And Hugo, the command serve, make it go. And then dash D is for drafts. So it shows the drafts. Um, so if we just do it HS, you don't see it change directory because there's no, the, it runs the command, but that command moves you. It doesn't actually return anything. Um, but if I close this, you'll see that I'm now in that directory. Um, so that's that's all that does. So the, the functions are, are nice because it's just, you, you create a function, you go to the name, you put the friends after you, put the squirrely brackets after it, and then in there, you just put all the commands that you want to run. Um, is the is the simplest way to do it. You can, of course, do other things like variables, conditionals, and loops, um, which is what we're going to look at. So ZSH... I think I've already got it open, don't I? I do. Um, so the command that we're going to want to run is HN. I should alphabetize these. H I J K L. H U G H S. Okay, that's fine. Um, I guess I should do. Does this make more sense? Put it in there. Is that tells to run, right? Oh, I have to. I gotta look it up. Bash reload. Is it just? It's like source. Yeah. Okay. You do source. Oh no, this is the one I like. Dot tilde slash dot the thing. This is a good answer. I like this answer. This is a good question. I like this question. I've got this in my notes somewhere, but it's it's tough to get to it because um, it's tough to search around. Uh, but so I just want to see, make sure this works. Get that slash dot zsh rc, right? Also, uh, and so now if I do hs. Yeah, there's the, so the, now it's echoing. Cool. Um, doo -doo -doo, cool. I want to go back to here, here, here. I've already got it open, right? Yep, cool, okay. So I just wanna make sure I can put the comments in there because it's, uh, I kind of like the comment inside the thing. Just, I don't know why. Um, open the Hugo directory in line text. We're in here, might as well do it. Uh, actually, I should do this. 
Because someday I may have another Hugo set. Who knows? Uh, function, new one. Hugo new, that's what we're gonna call it. Also, I did not spell function. How did I get there? So, in order for the Hugo command to run properly, as far as I can tell, it's gotta be in the directory. And then I'm just gonna do Hugo new, I'm just gonna do underscore underscore test, dev test index.md. First thing, I just wanna, you know, piece by piece, right? I could try and jump through all this thing, but it's like step by step. I wanna see if I can do this. So first step, hard code everything and see if you can just get it to run. So we're gonna do this. I'm just gonna do this and then do HN. So it looks like it created it. Prod, nope, yep. There you go. So that, that ran the new command. And here's, yeah, so it's our standard standard template. And eventually I may, I may try different templates, but slow and steady wins the, it's not really true. Um, slow and steady makes progress. Cool, so now what I need to do is, um, I wanna pass, I think the first thing I wanna do is pass, I wanna get, so, yeah, I'm gonna do this command by command because the, the, the two branches that I could take right now are I could try and fire up Sublime Text and fire up the, and open the file, or I could try and get the file, I could pass the, the parameters to get the file name that, that I want. And that's the thing I'm gonna work on now because it, it feels the right thing to do because I'm, I'm starting from the top of the script and moving down or top of the function. Um, Hugo new. So how, <laughs> I'm gonna see if I've got this in my notes. Um, bash function uh, local stack bash notes. Create a bash function, here you go. Oh, I didn't even put the parens after it. Oh yeah, this is a crazy one. I was trying to make CD automatically put a list after it, which worked, but like, it's not a good idea to overwrite built-in functions. Um, is what everybody has said. So I'm like, okay, I will not do that. Function. So none of the, here, passing parameter. Yeah, here we go. Okay, wait a minute. Parameter arguments can't be passed directly in variables. That is, this won't work. Arguments and functions. Excuse me. Instead, create array of parameters and use it. Response. But that's. Okay, that's that's not what I'm looking for either. Um... All right. Yeah, I. I've looked at this stuff before, but I've, I don't think I've ever actually done it. Um, Bash, bash, can't type. Very good, wow. I misspelled every single one of those words. Bash functions. Is this the page that I think it is? Nope. Oh, returns, okay, interesting. Still looking for passing arguments to the bash functions. Hello. And bash greeting, greeting Joe. Oh, all you gotta do is that. To pass any number, of, are any number of arguments to pass functions, simply put them right after the function's name, separated by a space. Good practice to double quote the arguments to avoid 
Yeah, okay. Passing parameters is blah, 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 blah. Queries responding to the position of the parameter after the function's name. Yep, zero is reserved for the function's name. Pound holds the number of positional arguments passed. Star and at hold all positional arguments past the functions. When double quoted, star expands to a single string separated by space. First character I have, okay. Double quoted, then it expands to separate strings. Okay. When not double quoted, those are the same. Here's an example. So, okay, I, I kind of thought you might have to put something in there to like catch it, like in Python or Perl or most other languages that I am familiar with. Um, so I'm a, let's well let's see if this works actually with this. So first thing I got to do again. So I'm just gonna I think this works as a comment in here. Um, echo one one. Uh, Dot, 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 Z, S, H, R, C, right? I'm gonna keep this on a separate window so I can just do this. Oh, uh, hit. Easy peasy. It's funny, I've done a bunch of scripting in Perl and Ruby and in Python, but I've almost never done bash scripting. And I feel like that's, because it's just, it's felt a little bit weird sometimes, and like the syntax is a little weird or whatever, and like, I don't know, but it's like, I am increasingly wondering why I haven't done more bash scripting for stuff. Um, Cause lots of times you'll end up opening a Perl script and calling out the system calls. And it's just like, hmm. uh, so what we got here. Um, so now the question is, quotes always get me, or this, this stuff always gets me. So. All right, now I actually am gonna go check. Yeah, okay, so I've got, I'm I'm gonna test directly because I don't wanna to have to build on the Hugo site. Like I can do a lot of stuff. Like this this is you know not the way that you would do this on production stuff or whatever, but like this is in Git repo, it's a backed up, everything's cool. So if I do something really crazy here, it'll be all right. I don't think I'm gonna do anything super crazy. Um, so the question is, is it as simple as this? That dev test two. Nope. Uh, unknown command dev test two for Hugo. Oh, right, right. Um, oh, well, the good news is we saw the string pass. Uh, the problem is I took away new. Created it. Boom. Uh, and, ooh, you know what's interesting is now I'm actually thinking about moving this to PHP to actually just have a web page where I can just type it and open it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get this working first. Um, So that makes the new, so that makes a new file, and then so I'm gonna just run this to open Sublime Text in that directory. Let me just make sure that that works. So we're gonna clear it or re refresh it. Dev test three. Sublime text opens that directory. Um, and then, do I want to open in that directory or the content directory? I think I want to go in the content directory. And then, 
I think if I just do this twice and give it this with the file name that we just made, you know, it's the same, this is the same thing just inside the content directory. So I'm in the content directory and then in the content directory again, I open it. There you go. Um, and let me see, does it actually show, oh no, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, so I wish, this is something still that I wish, and there may be a way to do it with Sublime Decks, but I wish it would actually like have this open and clicked on, because that's that file. I wish it'd, I wish it'd be selected as the as the file that you're on, right? Um, at least it stays open, that's cool. Uh, but that's it. Okay, so that's cool. That that makes that's a that's much nicer than what I was doing, right? So um, I don't know what I really need to make right now, but um, we're gonna do this and just clear it and then go. Uh, HN test it. Test it again. That's so much awesome. That's great. That's, it's such a little thing. Um, oh, you know what I didn't do? I think I closed, closed my show notes or live streaming notes, whatever they're. Uh, let's do this. Um, ah, see, ah! I wish most things, Three letters will let me tab autocomplete, but there's that config in there as well as that content, and that screws me. Um, God, I'll just look for it. Okay, fine. Journal, HIJKL, live streaming, live writing, live coding. Is that today, right here? You go file micro commands. Good. Uh, that only took half an hour. Um, so, but now what it's got me thinking is oh, so the thing I should do is we should put so there's also I hmm, I should almost certainly do this. Especially if I'm going to put this code up for uh, for an example. Um, if you go new, test, whatever, I'm getting burned on that. Um, Okay, so the dashes or the underscores are just makes it groups and everything up close to the top. I thought it was going to be up above the numbers, but it's actually just right below the numbers. But it's like that way. That's all the stuff that I did. Just makes it easier instead of just doing like example or whatever, and then having to go find it in the system. It's all just slammed up top. Uh, okay, so that still works. I want to make sure that still works with the quotes, but like the quotes is a better way to do that because like you could, I don't think you should, but you could pass a space in there, and I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. I'm not going to mess with it. Actually, probably make two things. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, that's cool, I love this, this is awesome. Uh, oh, you know what I should do? I go in there. Uh... Cool. Uh... So now what I'm interested in, because what would be even cooler is, like I got no, oh, see, I'm betting it's finished by now. Should we see a zombie at the end? There's a zombie at the end. Um, oh yeah, yeah, so this this isn't gonna pop the, uh, um, 
the directory up. We're gonna go back to that. Uh, so, and then uh, 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 update launch the script. We should put a time one thirty-five. My idea with this is like to, especially when I kind of do a bunch of things to be able to hone in and focus on it when I make some show notes. Um, so I was on one of them that I did. Um, is this it? Nope. See, the first few times I did this, like there's no, there's no notes, there's no nothing. So, and that's not as great. Um, but I have a future request, where's the one that I did? Yeah, so. Here's some, sh like, this makes, to me, this makes the video way more useful. And by the way, it can be useful on its own. So here's some, just some stuff. Like here's the, and actually here's the launch D script that we made in the other one. And actually you can see, we're just gonna change this path. So now we know what's about to happen. Um, and this path too, uh, cause we'll watch it and then we will open it. Um, that's gonna be a very short segment. Uh, also, let's do this. Oh, so let's add this. There's our link. It's fine. What did we do this? Three load, that's cool. I don't know about the song, but it's gonna be okay for now. Uh, Give stuff there, that's fine. Um, cool, so we got not fine. Uh, the, the launch D scripts are like, um, these little agents that run for you that do different things depending on what you tell them to do, right? They're basically just scripts, um, and, but they have triggers on them. Uh, they live in, um, your libraries folder under launch agents. And then there's a naming convention where you do like, so if my website's alanwsmith.com, you reverse that and then you do com.alanwsmith. That whatever just is a name as a namespace. Um, uh, so the, the file that we're going to work on is this one, um, com alanwsmith open current gifts dot playlist or open current gift or dot p list a playlist. Um, also it got quiet. See, there's just, I downloaded a tremendous number of songs from the YouTube thing. So they're kind of all over the place. So I need to get like a consistent, you know, bed going. Um, anyways, here we go. See, again, this weirds me out because like it opened this in this, but this directory tree is here, but this is nowhere near that directory. I need to see if there's better ways to do that. Um, but so the, what, what we've got going on, right, is our script, There used to be a directory right here called underscore current gif, which will look surprisingly like, I'll bring up that in a minute, like this. That was the path, right? Under gifs, there's this directory underscore current gif. So that's where we used to, where we used to write out that file when you click on, um, when you click on one of the images, right? So click, click, it used to write to that location. We changed that earlier. Now it writes to this one, underscore gifts to send, and here it is, send it. So all we really need to do to update the script is change the file path. And we gotta change it in two places because we this is your watch path. I scroll it over. Actually, can I make this a new, its own window? I can. Can I bring it back? I can. Can we see it all? We can. Um, so all this all this thing does is you set a watch path on it. So you set a, a watch as a trigger. Um, and in the array, you just give it the one directory that we want to watch, which in this case, HTML prod, now we're up here, is a sibling of HTML prod, which is this. So we want to watch that directory and then 
when this triggers, when something happens inside that directory, the program gets run and it's really program arguments. There's this, there is a program that can be called as well. I still don't totally understand the difference, but this works. So we call program arguments. We tell it we want to use bash and with bash, we're going to pass it a command, which is the dash C and that command is open. Oh, hang on. Let me just make sure I got it copied right. And so we were opening the other directory. Now we're going to open this directory. That's it. The last thing we need to do, so in order to get the launch agent to reload, um, you could log all the way out and log back in, that reloads them. Um, but there's also, uh, actually give me one second. Launch the, Uh, I'm just making sure, like, some of the LaunchD stuff I have, I don't think there's any work stuff in there, but, um, so, yeah, so what you do, so, this is actually, actually that's a great note, um, 2012, again, been a little while, uh, so to reload all your, yeah, so, oh, so what I should have done, So you could reload all of them with this, but the, like really what I want to do is a, is a specific one. So I'm going to, I'm going to unload. That, that's the one that we're working on, right? Um, and then I'm going to reload it. I don't need the semicolons there because the semicolons were when I was doing it from up here. Um, Cause you can, you can put it all in one line. Um, this one just ran all of them and it would give me a status of, uh, of it. But so I'm going to unload it. Now I'm going to reload it. So it's it's up and moving now. And so what should happen is now when we click on our famous GIF of David Tennant, David Tennant, Doctor Who saying no. Actually, here we go. Data saying yes, because hopefully it works, right? And data's going to go yes, just like that. See, that's how fast it's supposed to go. Cool. There's your LaunchD stuff. Um, I guess I can put the launch D back in there. Oh, did I close it? I did. Uh, all right, let's open it again. Just throw it back in there. Like, it's just code that we did, so why not? Uh, where is... Oh, I need to get rid of all those tested things. Cool, uh, so let me get rid of all those test things. Uh, so that can stay, that can go, that can go. Oh, there it was right there. Maybe that was one I copied, I don't know. Um, hmm, starting to fade a little. I'm gonna leave it. drinking it but the bubbles are nice um what am i doing i'm going here i'm going here i'm going here yeah see sublime text sort is different than the file system sort because in sublime text the numbers came first and then the underscores and the file system the underscores are first um but we can just clear all those out um all right, so there's, hmm, okay, that's cool, that's cool, we're doing all right. Let's see, I may do one other thing. Um, so I've got the video stuff done. That's solid. Got my GIFs redone. Everything's in version control now. It's pretty good. Nope. Yep. Oh, I need to move that. Okay, that's cool, let me do that. Uh, so I, okay, now, is, uh, oh, so yeah, we actually did both of these. So make a tool that makes new Hugo files and launches them. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that as that. Set up Hugo to show drafts differently so you can see them. That's the thing that I wanna do. Okay, so this is good. Um, let's remove this down here. Sweet. I did that incorrectly. So this way. Strike. But the other one that I want to add is, whoops. Make PHP page to launch, to create new Hugo pages with different templates. Uh, yes, because when you first create a Hugo, um, page, it gives you this, a, a basic layout here. The title ends up being the file name. That's no problem. Drafts is on, but like the tag is always miscellaneous. But like if I make a, if I click to make a journal, I want the title to actually be like journal, you know, SEPT dot date, day dash year, coming year, whatever. Like I want to change the format just a little bit for each one of these, depending on when I upload. So first step is cool. Like I've, I've got the command so I can make it happen and get it there really fast. That's going to, that, that'll cover me for a little while. Cause it may take me a little bit to do the PHP one. So and it, I hadn't super, I kind of thought about it, but I hadn't super gotten there and I, and I was focused a little bit on doing the command line one. So it's there, but that's probably going to be short lived. Um, but I've got it now and it's, it's awesome. So I may discover that I really like it. And I don't need to do the other one, but I kind of like the idea of having a web page where I can just click on the one that I want to create, or maybe just type in a little something and click create, um, or even better. So like some of these things, uh, and I can also do, and again, I could do this on command line, but for the live coding ones, um, originally I was putting in like names, which is kind of like SEO stuff, search engine optimization, right? And like, Ooh, whatever. But like, I don't care about that anymore. Um, I'm just, I want to have all these things up there and out and as much friction as I can re remove for me getting them there, the better. So I'm just going to basically always name them live coding with year month day. And then if there's two of them, it'll be year month day dash two. And if there's a third stream, it'll be dash three, right? So I can automate all that stuff to a point where I just go make me a live coding thing and launch it and get it all prepped. And that way it's like, a, it's a one button go. Um, so that's, I'm going to do that. Uh, but not tonight. The one that I am going to look at tonight. No, I'm good. I'm good. I was going to, so for next time on hello world, the vlog, uh, this is a vlog. I don't know if this is a vlog or live coding or what, but, um, with the, with my Hugo site, Uh, HS, right? Hugo serve should get me there. Should start it. The other trick is remembering the commands that you make and functions. Um, oh, that's what else I could do. Hang on. Uh, all right, I'm gonna try something real quick. Ah. What does that do? Open, sorry, from command line. And Chrome or Safari and terminal. I don't want to do Chrome, but Safari would be nice. Ah, uh, Safari command line, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's trying to open a desktop folder. Safari is an applications folder. Open a, open a Safari. These are very old. S A F A R I. Ho 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 ho! 
That's cool. This note's from, oh, it's from 2017. I thought it was older than that. What is the question? I thought the question was super old. Oh, not that old. Um, check this out. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, you need to do a terminal, no matter what PW is used. Huh? It's the same. Weird. Like, that's basically the comment. Oh, I'll let my answer then. Why didn't you add an answer? Oh, okay. So I see what happened. Somebody wrote something and then the comment went over it. And that's very confusing. Uh, okay. But the question is, can I pass it in arguments? Crap. The file. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, it doesn't. But yeah, let's see what happens if we put that in there. So now what we can do... Uh, I don't know if this should be a separate thing, but whatever. This is cool, because now what we can do, check this out. So when I do my HS, that's already it's already open, it's already running, so it's going to yell at me for being on the same port. Um, So no matter where I am, right? So if I go to my home directory, my home directory, when I do HS, it jumps me to that Hugo directory, which is cool, and then runs the Hugo serve uh, drafts command, right? Well, pretty much always the next thing I want to have happen after that is I want to be able to see the web page. So what if? We do this. S A F A R I. Local host thirteen thirteen. And just to get it in our fingers, we'll see if we can do this. And now we do Hugo serve. Oh, okay. It's not going to work because because this is a still a running process. If I control C this, maybe it's gonna fire. Yep, okay. So the that second command, um, let's just run this into here. Uh, nope. Oh, whoops. Wait, why didn't that? Oh, I see what's going on. Um, I'm going to close that and get that out of there. So when this command runs, it it stops. It, it, it holds stuff. It holds it in state, basically. Like, it, it, it keeps running. It, do, it doesn't just exit. So until you control C it and quit, it doesn't make it to the next nine. Now, you could throw it to the background. You could do some other tricks with that. But if you throw it to the background, you would then have to get in and stop it a little bit differently, like with a kill. Um, but I'm just going to see... This, I think this is gonna work because the, the terminal doesn't really care that it's not the, the frontmost application. So it's gonna CD into, I think, this is what I think is gonna happen. It's gonna CD into, into the website directory. It's gonna fire off the command that, that launches Safari and that's gonna show up in the top window. And then it's going to run the command underneath. So when it first launches, it's not, yeah, so I guess the one bummer there is that when it first launches, it's going to be, the, the website website won't be there. Um, but then you can do a quick reload and it will be. I wonder if there's a way, you know what you could do, probably, is there's probably a way to put a timer on this and like make it wait two seconds. Or make it wait until it's all, I don't know, whatever, overthinking it right now. Um, let's just see if this works. So dot... Do the dance. There you go. And so now I should just be able to hit refresh and there it is. That's cool. I like that a lot. Um, um, 
that's way better than um because i always fired up on the command so originally i would i would type i would cd myself into the directory i would type hugo space source dash d it would launch i'd flip over to the browser i'd do loc which would get me to localhost and hit enter and it would tap complete or auto complete and I'd be there now i just go hn or hs and all that happens but i gotta hit reload but still like it HS, wait a half second, control R. Oh, that sprite is bad, warm. Okay, no more of that. All right, um, that's cool, I like that a lot. So, last thing I'm gonna do, um, CLI, open. To, And the other thing that I want to look up actually real quick, is, and so let me actually put that in our notes. Did I lose our notes? I lost our notes. Um, uh, see, I can get to this. I, J, K, L, live, something, right? That's writing. That's named things. So close that for a second, close that. in here. What's going on? Uh, all you need is right now, that's right here. Oh yeah, it actually says this. And, 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 and optionally add the URL afterwards if you want to open the browser to give a new URL. Oh, I, I just zoned right past that. Um, I can't do it right now. I'm not going to log in. I will at least link to you. That's a good one. This is the same thing. Uh, yeah, oh, there you go. Example, example. Sub here with drafts, that's what I was gonna do. I don't think, I didn't do any of these things, right? I just got it all. Okay, yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, Got the notes, I've got everything set up. I think that's gonna do it for tonight. Um, I feel like there's gonna be one other thing I was gonna do, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, so, that's the sign, that's it. We're out, see you all, have a good one.